Our next performer is a close personal friend of mine. He helped me shape my stories, helped me shape myself as a performer. He's just encouraging and funny, warm, awesome. He's also, I don't mind telling you, he's extraordinarily good looking. Uh, you'll, you'll draw that conclusion, I'm just taking you there. His name is Brad Lawrence. He's going to come tell you a story right now. Hello. So, um, when I was a kid, I was a great big fat nerd. And this is in the days before nerds ruled the world in our daily lives. Um, but now they do, and as a consequence, like when you meet someone you know, who is truly a nerd, now in the age when every supermodel begins every profile with, I'm just a big nerd, these guys want to know your cred. They want to know like, your, your bona fides, and you'll get quizzed. And uh, generally I do okay with these things. My Doctor Who's up to snuff. Um, my Star Trek, the original series, I'm good. But there is one giant gaping hole in my nerd credibility. And this is the story of that hole. Um, when I was about 11 years old, the fifth grade, I was invited to my first ever birthday pool party. Right, and I was kind of surprised at the invitation. It was from this kid Eric, and I didn't really know Eric that well. I mean, I didn't really think of us as friends, kind of more passing acquaintances, kind of a nodding kind of thing. So I was kind of surprised, kind of taken aback. But I was like, you know, I've never been to a pool party. This is an opportunity I could meet people, mingle, make friends, be good. It's be good for me socially. So I'll, I'll go to I'll go to a pool party. Yeah, that'd be great. So I go, I have my mom drop me off at Eric's house, and I go up to the house, and here's where it takes its first weird turn, is that I get into the house, and I find out, I realize that I am the only guest oh. <laughs> at the birthday pool party. <laughs> Which is not really a party. You know, with only like one guest. That's kind of more of a twosome, and it's a little weird. You know, and I'm kind of, I'm like, um... But at the same time, you know, I, I have no friends. Eric has me. He's one up on me. <laughs> You know, so I'm like, all right, you know, this this is fine. This is fine. It's a, a, it's a day for new experiences. Um, let's let's all right. Let, well, let's let's get this going. Let's go. Let's get the pool party. I've come in my trunks. Let's get the pool party rolling. So he takes me around the side of the house to the backyard, and here's where we hit our next snag. There's no pool. <laughs> <laughs> what there is is a kind of metal trough, like the kind of thing you would like water cattle with. <laughs> And it's about half full of water. And I'm looking at this, and there's, there's no party, there's no pool. I'm kind of wondering if I should ask the kid for ID and make sure it's a birthday. You know, but I'm out there. But again, I don't even have a trough. I have no trough, I have no friends. So again, like, who am I to judge here? So it's like, all right, let's get the, let's get the trough party started then. Let's do it. So I, I get into the trough, and I can't really quite figure out what to do with the trough. Like, there's not a lot of... There's no, I, my, my imagination's kind of stuck on this like foot and a half of water. So I just sit down against the side of the trough, with my back against the metal, you know, troughing, and I'm, my, my legs are, I'm sitting Indian style, and I'm just sitting there, like rib deep in water. And uh, this is where my ideas end, basically. But Eric has an idea, and Eric's idea is he gets into the pool, and he just begins going in this sort of straight line, back and forth, back and forth, right? Sort of just like churning up the water a little bit, so it's like sort of gentle waves are kind of washing up against me. And he begins kind of going, yay, wee, woo, and he's like really into this. I mean, he's just, this is like a big deal, and he's getting, he's enjoying himself, yay, woo, and I'm watching him, and he's going back and forth and churning up the water, and rap, woo, yay. And I, it's going on a really long time now, and I'm, he's, he's really focused on this, and I'm starting to find it a little weird when finally his mom comes out. And I'm like, all right, great. You know, a third person, maybe the conversation will start. Um, and, but no, because basically his mom comes out with an entire birthday cake, a whole birthday cake, and sets it down on the patio table, and then leaves. So it's just me and Eric, and an entire birthday cake. And so I cut myself a piece of the birthday cake, and I'm eating a piece of the birthday cake. And Eric proceeds to hoover half a birthday cake. 
He just like doesn't. There's no chewing involved. He just shoves it right past his tonsils. Just, just, just consumes this thing. And then he's just like, "Let's get back in the pool." And I'm like, "You'll get a cramp." And he, he just, but no, you know, like he jumps back in there, and I get in there. I, I resume my position against the side of the trough. And now he is like the 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 going back and forth thing. Like that has been replaced with running back and forth because now he is full of sugar and carbs. And he's like, ah, ah, woo! And it's like, it's like a little it's like a little tsunami is going on in there. And I'm getting slapped in the face with this like a foot and a half of water, and he's just churning up yeah, woo! And like the, the yays and the cheers have kind of transformed into like sort of howls and, and grunts and yeah, woo! And it's getting really, really strange. And then it takes a really a much stranger turn in that he stops completely, turns full on to me, and pulls out his penis. <laughs> and I am just like face to face with his penis, and I don't know why this is part of the party. And he and he and he sort of his eyes glaze over and his mouth opens and he starts making this noise like something is broken inside the gears are stuck like something is rusted to a complete stop there's no expression and then just like that he comes out of it puts his penis away and goes let's play Dungeons and Dragons and hops out of the trough and I'm still sitting there going what is why what did the why did that happen I don't understand this. I don't understand what's going on. Dungeons and Dragons, what? And he's, but he's gone. He's like heading off to the windowless basement and expects me to follow him. And I do, because I was apparently way too compliant of a child. <laughs> so I get out of the pool and I follow him into the basement where he has the whole Dungeons and Dragons thing set up there. I've never played Dungeons and Dragons and I don't know what's going on. He starts trying to explain the rules to me, but I cannot focus because all I can think about is that there's just one thin, damp layer of nylon between me and him adding a new player to the game. You know, it's the Dragon of Fool. Boom. And like, there it is. And, 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 and all of a sudden he's saying, you've got a magic sword. And I'm like, I have a magic sword? Apparently gameplay had begun at some point. And he's like, give a magic sword. And I'm like, why is it a magic sword? And he's like, because it's possessed by a demon and it's got a spell on it and you can't put it down. And I'm like, well, when do you put yours down? And, and he's like, and so he's like, you have to roll this many numbered die in order to put the sword down. And I'm like, how many do I have to roll for my ride to come? <laughs> Basically, this kind of goes on, and I really never get, I can't focus. I never get the hang of Dungeons and Dragons. What also does not happen is any kind of prepubescent rape. <laughs> I get out of the uh, windowless basement when my mom arrives relatively unmolested. <laughs> But I never did learn to play Dungeons and Dragons. And I never tried to play Dungeons and Dragons again. I also never went to a pool party again. And I also never went to an Eric party again. Thank you.